Since its inception in 1989, Superboat International, SBI, the only sanctioning body of offshore powerboat racing, has crowned a world champion based on the accumulated points of races around the country. With no regulations as to how many horses are allowed under the hood, SBI's competitions are the fastest and quite possibly the most dangerous of all extreme sports. We've been around for uh, about 30 years. These boats, as you can see, are pretty big, wide. It's a unique sport. The season kicked off in May in Cocoa Beach, Florida. If you're ready, let's go racing! Race favorite Team Gasset's engine trouble took them out, and rival Lucas Oil went home with the win. After that devastating loss, Gasset took the next race in Sarasota off to recoup and repair, while Lucas Oil earned even more points. The scene was set for a showdown at the next stop. Hi everybody and welcome to Miami, Florida. It's the 22nd annual Superboat Miami Grand Prix. You know, this is a great event for us, Miami. This is the 22nd annual event. We love coming to the home of offshore racing. This is the place to be. There's almost no better place than racing in, uh, in Miami. As the birthplace of the sport and the only race worth double points, a checkered flag in Miami often catapults teams towards the coveted world championship, giving the racers an extra incentive to push the limits of their boat's capabilities. That combined with the sporadic weather the city is known for creates a metaphorical and literal perfect storm for competitors. And as the fastest boat with the most ground to gain, Team Gasset could find themselves smack dab in the eye of that storm. In the dry pits before the race, Gasset driver Tor Stabo welcomes the challenge. My name is Tor Stabo. I'm from Norway. I have a team here for offshore pole boat racing in the unlimited class, which we call Gasse. It's in Norwegian, it means give full throttle. Oh, the Gassi boat, they're, they're great. You know, they, they uh, biggest class, super boat, unlimited class. You know, without a doubt, they've got the best throttlemen in the world. You know, when you hire the top gun, Johnny Tomlinson, you put him in the boat, uh, you know, you're, you're expecting to do well. Hey, my name's John Tomlinson, right here from Miami, Florida. My role on the team's a throttle man. The throttle man controls the power of the engines. Um, on the power, off the power, adjust it in rough water conditions, and I'm on and off the gas. He is a legendary. He is the best. Everybody comes to me as a newcomer in this uh, sport, says, you have the best trot man there is. And he has put this crew together, which works perfect. So we are really depending on Johnny Tomlinson. Uh, boats start arriving, you know, here in Miami. We're down at Bayfront Park, uh, down by the Bayside Mall, and uh, boats start to arrive on Thursday night. And everyone was rolling in early. People get excited, uh, you know, to start racing. And weather conditions, like you see today, we've got overcast. We've got a lot of storms offshore, and that could have sort of ruined their setup. So they got to pay attention to, uh, you know, what's going to go on today. We made it through our drivers' meeting this morning, so everyone, all the boats are pulling up to the cranes, uh, ready to get craned in. And if all goes well, we should, we should be in good shape to, to go off at 1 o'clock, which is planned. However, you know, we have manatee helicopters, we have safety helicopters, we have safety boats, you know, we have patrol boats, you know, we have scoring boats. So we have a lot of logistics to organize out there right now. And when race control calls in, you know, we're ready to go. Even with bad and quite possibly life-threatening race day weather looming, the unlimited superboat teams were all business in prepping for the biggest race of the tour. But the question on everyone's mind is, can Team Gasset put the Cocoa Beach breakdown behind them and stop Lucas Oil? Yeah, everything looks good after yesterday's test session. The boat's in good shape, no problems. Couldn't find anything to be aware of, so should be ready to go, hopefully in an hour or so. Their dream of a world championship title depends heavily on this race. We had some horrendous weather earlier. It's all past now. The sun has come out to show off these blue-green, beautiful Atlantic waters as 13 of the biggest and fastest race boats in the world will be duking it out momentarily for prizes and checkered flags. A battle for ocean supremacy here in South Florida. 
looks like Gasset pulling out a slight lead now. They'll have to start thinking about setting up for this turn. As the 13 lap race continued, there was a lot of excitement. 77 miles of racing separated the teams from capturing the checkered flag. The rough waters were no match for the feats of human engineering in each of these superboats. Indeed, it is Gasse and uh, Lucas Hoyle side by side. What a battle. All could see the real race was between the two red boats, Lucas Oil and number eight Gasse. Try as they might, Lucas Oil could not catch up to the power of the Gasse boat, who managed to hit speeds of 140 miles per hour. First place with a checkered flag, number eight, Gasse. Of all the triumphs of the day, the biggest went to Team Gasse winning the overall trophy. Tor and his team are now confident in knowing their boat can run the fastest and most dangerous event in the Superboat International Championship. Well, we have had a beautiful day here at Miami, and we did win. Knowing the boat and knowing how it's capable of running, I knew that you know today's race would prevail like we did, and it was a matter of just bringing it home and head to our world championships at the end of the year in a position to win.